on uh, it will be closest to earth actually on december 19th uh, which is just the week before uh, christmas in nine days on december 19th 2025 an object from another star system will reach its closest point to earth there will be no sirens no breaking news banners no emergency messages on your phone instead somewhere on a mountaintop in deserts in frozen valleys and city rooftops telescopes will quietly turn toward a single point in the sky on their screens 3 i atlas will appear as a tiny blue smear of light to most people it will look like nothing to the people who've been tracking it for months it looks like a question the universe is forcing us to answer for almost a year now we've been told the same thing about 3 i atlas it's a comet an unusual one sure but still natural a frozen relic a dirty snowball a visitor that comes and goes and leaves nothing behind but dust and good images but the closer we get to december 19th the harder that story is to defend because the closer we look the more this object behaves like it never got the memo about how comets are supposed to act let's start with the timeline right now as you listen to this we are nine days away from our best viewing geometry on December 19th, the angle between the Sun, Earth, and 3i Atlas lines up just enough to give us a side-lit view. The coma, the bright, glowing atmosphere of gas and dust around the nucleus, may thin just enough in just the right direction for us to glimpse the solid heart at the center for the first time. That window will not last. The object is already on a hyperbolic escape path. After this flyby, it heads outward, crossing Jupiter's orbit by March 2026, and by the early 2030s, it will be gone. A ghost fading into interstellar space again. We get one real look, and everything we've seen so far tells us we should use it, because 3 I Atlas has already broken almost every rule we use to understand comets. When Hubble locked onto it on November 30th, 2025, Astronomers expected a messy, chaotic object. It had just passed perihelion, the point where the sun's heat is most brutal. That's when comets usually start to fall apart, venting wildly, shedding fragments, showing fractured, elongated cores. Instead, Hubble saw a tight, concentrated nucleus wrapped in a smooth, symmetric halo nearly 40,000 kilometers wide. No obvious fractures, no visible breakup, no hint of a nucleus being torn apart. At the same time, buried in that glow, enhancement filters revealed something else. A narrow, focused spike of material extending about 60,000 kilometers and pointing directly toward the sun. That sunward spike is not supposed to exist. In standard comet physics, tails point away from the sun. Solar radiation and solar wind strip off gas and dust and blow it back, creating ion tails and dust tails that always stream away from the star. The only time you see anything that looks like a tail pointing inward is when Earth's perspective lines up just right with the comet's orbit, creating a visual illusion. In those cases, the material isn't actually going toward the sun. It just appears that way from our line of sight. But 3i Atlas refused to cooperate with that explanation. The sunward feature showed up before perihelion. It showed up after perihelion. Its orientation flipped relative to the comet's motion. But it kept pointing toward the sun. It didn't vanish when the geometry changed. It persisted. And then came the detail that turned a weird structure into something far stranger. The length and shape of that sunward anti-tail matched almost exactly a prediction made before the Hubble image was taken. A model that assumed 3i Atlas had released macroscopic fragments, solid pieces, not just gas, during its solar pass. Those fragments, according to the model, should drift under non-gravitational forces to a position roughly 60,000 kilometers toward the sun by late November. The observation matched the calculation, not kind of, not sort of, down to the scale. Natural outgassing is chaotic. It does not usually produce geometry you can predict months in advance to that precision. 
Yet here we are, nine days before closest approach, staring at an object whose most impossible feature was sketched out before we ever saw it. The color evolution has been just as unsettling. When 3 Eye Atlas was first detected, it had the deep reddish tone we expect from interstellar objects, a crust baked by cosmic rays for millions of years. As it fell toward the sun, that red gave way to green, a classic signature of diatomic carbon and cyanogen glowing under solar heating. Strange, but within the bounds of comet chemistry. After perihelion, as the object moved away and cooled, the safe prediction was that it would fade to gray. Instead, it turned blue. Not a faint blue tint. A sharp, bright, electric blue. The color we usually associate with ionized gases, high-energy discharges, and hot plasmas. On Earth, you see that shade in welding arcs, lightning, and the eerie glow surrounding nuclear reactors. In space, it usually means gases are being driven to extreme energy levels. But 3 I Atlas is moving away from the sun. The energy input from sunlight is dropping, not rising. Outgassing should be slowing. Activity should be fading. The object should be calming down. Instead, the blue emission is strengthening. One conservative explanation is that the sun stripped away the weathered red surface, exposing a fresh layer of volatile ices from another star system that just happens to glow blue when energized. That would be strange, but not impossible. The problem is that the blue is not fading as the object cools. It's holding even as the available solar energy declines. That's the part that makes some researchers quietly ask a question they're not eager to say into a microphone. What if the blue isn't just chemistry, but energy output? If an object like 3 I Atlas were using the sun for an Oberth maneuver, diving close, then firing some kind of propulsion at perihelion to maximize the energy of each unit of thrust, you would expect a flare of activity followed by a residual glow as that system wound down. A sequence of colors, red from an old irradiated crust, green from conventional cometary volatiles, then blue from high energy exhaust, suddenly looks less like a random rainbow and more like a three-stage process. Not proof, but not easy to ignore. Then there's the chemistry itself. Radio observatories like ALMA have detected enormous quantities of methanol and hydrogen cyanide in 3I Atlas's coma. Those are not just any molecules. Methanol is a fundamental fuel for certain microbes and a common building block in astrochemistry. Hydrogen cyanide is notoriously toxic to life as we know it. But in the right conditions, it's also one of the key ingredients in forming adenine, a core component of DNA and RNA. The ratio between the two around 3i Atlas is extreme, roughly 12 to 1. We've seen something like it only once before, in a famously bizarre comet from within our own solar system that pushed the edges of what we consider normal chemistry. Now imagine that same chemical profile, not from a local object, but from something that formed in a different stellar nursery, under different radiation, with different elemental abundances, if you believe in natural panspermia, the idea that life's building blocks are carried from star system to star system by rocks and ice, 3i Atlas is a dream scenario. High methanol, abundant hydrogen cyanide, global cryovolcanic eruptions near perihelion, blasting this chemistry into space. It looks like a seeding event, a natural courier dumping prebiotic materials into a new system. But once again, the details complicate the safe story. 3i Atlas isn't just venting gas into a symmetric cloud. It is releasing material in structured jets with a persistent anti-tail and heavy solid particles mixed into the flow. Observations show it shedding not only fine dust, but pebbles. Gravel-sized chunks that are too massive to be blown away quickly by solar radiation pressure. Dust leaves the solar system in weeks or months. Pebbles linger for decades, centuries, even longer. If you wanted to leave something behind, markers, 
seeds, sensors, or simply chemistry designed to wait until it collides with a planet, you wouldn't choose fine dust. You'd choose exactly what 3i Atlas is now leaving, trailing in its wake. The signals we detect from it in radio frequencies add another layer. Telescopes have picked up steady emissions at frequencies associated with hydroxyl radicals, which is exactly what you'd expect if sunlight is breaking apart water and other molecules. That's the official explanation. Natural photochemistry. Case closed, but the signal is strikingly stable. Comets that outgas in jets usually produce radio signatures that fluctuate as they spin, brightening and fading as active regions rotate into and out of view. With 3i Atlas, the emission looks more like a constant hum than an irregular heartbeat. Again, not proof of anything artificial, but another data point that refuses to quite fit the box we keep trying to shove it into. Underlying all of this is one more puzzle that becomes critical as we count down these last nine days. The way 3i Atlas moves. Interstellar objects arrive on hyperbolic trajectories shaped almost entirely by gravity. Comets that outgaze as experience small non-gravitational accelerations, but those are usually messy. They kick the object around unpredictably, changing its spin, wobbling its path, adding noise to the orbit. With 3i Atlas, the non-gravitational acceleration looks unusually clean. Instead of making the orbit fuzzier over time, new measurements keep tightening the fit. As data sets from more and more observatories come in, the predicted path becomes sharper, not blurrier. Tiny deviations from a purely gravitational trajectory appear to be nudging the object into very specific alignments with major bodies, including a future brush with Jupiter's Hill Sphere that will be measured in tens of thousands of miles out of tens of millions. It's the kind of precision we normally associate with missions designed on computers and corrected with thrusters, not with icy rubble. And that brings us back to now. December 10th, nine days before closest approach, this is the moment when the astronomical community quietly splits into two conversations. The public one is cautious, conservative, almost bored, a fascinating comet, an unusual interstellar object, great opportunity for science. The private one is much more blunt. There are too many anomalies to wave away comfortably, the sunward anti-tail that won't go away. The predictive success of models that assume macroscopic fragments. The red-green-blue evolution that doesn't match simple heating curves. The chemistry that looks almost tailor-made for prebiotic reactions. The heavy debris that refuses to disperse. The smooth, non-gravitational acceleration. None of that proves intent. None of it proves engineering. But all of it justifies paying attention. On December 19th, the curtain may lift. If the coma thins and the geometry cooperates, we might finally glimpse the nucleus. Its shape, its reflectivity, its texture. Does it look like a jagged irregular rock, a loose rubble pile, a fractured shard, or something smoother, more symmetric, more manufactured? We may only get silhouettes, hints, a few pixels brighter or darker than their surroundings, but those few pixels could be enough to tilt the debate one way or another for decades. After that, the opportunity is over. 3i Atlas will continue outward, crossing orbits, leaving behind a trail of gas, dust, and pebbles that becomes part of our solar system whether we like it or not. Some of those particles may fall into our atmosphere in the coming years, too small for anyone to notice, but large enough to deliver whatever chemistry they carry. Maybe it's just amino acids joining the vast pool already here. Maybe it's nothing life-related at all. Maybe it's compounds we haven't even named yet, created under conditions that never existed in our own neighborhood. The most unsettling possibility is that 3i Atlas is entirely indifferent to us. That it is neither messenger, nor weapon, nor gardener, 
but something carrying out a task that has nothing to do with humanity. It doesn't slow down as it approaches. It doesn't beam messages in narrowband radio or flash obvious patterns in visible light. It doesn't curve its path toward Earth. It simply moves, steadily, unnervingly, through gravitational contours, as if they're landmarks in a landscape it understands. Nine days from now, the telescopes will be pointed, the images will be taken, and the data will start to flow in. We may find out that 3i Atlas is simply the strangest natural object we've ever seen, a statistical outlier that stretches our models without breaking them. Or we may find hints that something else is going on, something that forces us to rethink what it means for an object to pass through a planetary system. So as we count down these last nine days to closest approach, here's the question that matters more than any headline. If this really is our one chance to watch an interstellar visitor up close, and if there's even a small possibility that it isn't just another rock, what do we choose to look for? Signs of chemistry. Signs of structure. Signs of intent. Drop your theory in the comments. Do you lean toward just a comet? Toward a natural panspermia vessel? Or toward something probe-like that doesn't fit in any box we've used before? Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss what happens on December 19th. Because whatever 3i Atlas really is, we are not going to get another object exactly like this, on exactly this path, in our lifetime. And the story it's writing across our sky is almost finished. 